Hello everyone and welcome to another loosely scripted ranking of a Star Trek thing. Today we're talking about final episodes of Star Trek shows. Now, obviously because all of the modern Star Trek shows, Discovery, Picard, Lower Decks, etc. are still running and haven't come to an end, none of those shows are going to be on this list. Again, that does seem obvious, but someone always asks something like that with these videos. But with that out of the way, let's get stuck into... an ad. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. As someone whose livelihood is primarily on YouTube, I know it's always a wise policy to carve out your own space online with a website, store or portfolio of work. Squarespace is ideal if you want to create a website quickly and easily. No coding needed, simply select a pre-built, fully customizable template and then adjust it to your own style and layout using easy to use drag and drop tools or build one from scratch if that's more your thing. Either way, you'll be able to have your own website up and running in no time. For my own site, obviously I make a lot of videos, which is why Squarespace's portfolios, galleries and video block features are ideal for the kind of site I want to create. Squarespace also allows you to create each website with a custom protected domain name, which can help your website reach the right audience. For example, by using a specific domain name like .art. All this and more is available for you to check out by clicking the link in the description. Head over to squarespace.com forward slash Rowan J. Coleman and use the promo code Rowan J. Coleman for 10% off your first purchase. Thank you again to Squarespace for helping me keep the lights on over here. And now, back to the video. Bottom of the list is Turnabout Intruder from Star Trek The Original Series. Now, this isn't technically a true finale, as the original series was cancelled, therefore this just happens to be the last episode broadcast, and wow, what a low note to go out on. The apparent sexism of the episode has already been discussed at length by myself and others, and yeah, it's pretty difficult to square this with a lot of uh, one's own headcanon, but... Even aside from that, this is just a really poor outing for the series. It's pretty much the original series at its worst, or rather, all the worst aspects of the original series distilled into one episode. The goofy premise, the cringeworthy acting from William Shatner, the sluggish pace, the whole thing is just awkward and unenjoyable. It's bad, but not in a fun way like Spock's brain, which was at least ridiculous enough to be entertaining. Turnabout Intruder, however, is simply a slog to get through. Above that, we have The Counterclock Incident, the last episode of the animated series. In terms of pure writing competency, this is probably a better episode than the next one I'm going to mention, but I've just never really clicked with the animated series in general. I know for a lot of Trekkies, the animated series holds a special place in their hearts. I can understand how valuable the show was in getting that Star Trek fix after the cancellation of the original series, but for me, the animated series is a handy way to spend 20 minutes and not much else. The animation is serviceable but not really that good, and the writing is fine but never gets close to the quality of the original series at its best, I've never been super invested in any of the stories it told and the finale is no different. It's not really anything special, a typical outing for the show. The premise is weird but lends itself well to the animated medium, it's a decent bit of cartoon entertainment but in my opinion there are better places to get that from Star Trek, especially now. Next up is These Are The Voyages, the last episode of Star Trek Enterprise. Now I know a lot of people would probably rank this finale at the bottom, which is pretty understandable. As discussed in my Enterprise retrospective, this episode is essentially a rush job. The result of a sudden cancellation and a production team having neither the time or resources to put together something satisfying to end the show on. The whole thing is just a baffling end product. Riker and Troy simulating the NX-01 on the holodeck may have made for a perfectly fine weekly novelty, but by showing up in the last episode of this show, they feel like an intrusion. And tying their part of the episode so heavily into TNG's Pegasus is such a strange choice. Pegasus is a good episode, in fact I think it's a great episode, but it's not exactly iconic to most fans of either The Next Generation or Enterprise. Aside from Riker and Troy though, this finale is still full of bizarre creative decisions. Moving the timeline ahead several years, but apparently not advancing any of the characters, making the last mission a pretty standard fair hostage rescue from pirates we've never seen or heard of before, those same pirates somehow sneaking aboard the Enterprise leading to Tripp's contrived and nonsensical death, Archer's iconic speech ratifying the birth of the United Federation of Planets being cut off at the end, and so on. These are the Voyagers is certainly a baffling product, but the reason I don't rank it at the absolute bottom is that 
In my opinion, confusion is at least a step up from boredom. And at the very least, that final montage is a nice sign-off for the show and this era of Star Trek in general. From those bottom three, we have a big leap up in quality to Endgame, the finale of Star Trek Voyager. I've stated my soft spot for Voyager as a series before, and Endgame is, in a way, emblematic of what I like and dislike about the show. Time travel was certainly overused in Voyager by this point, but Admiral Janeway travelling back to make sure every single one of her crew make it back is so representative of her character's fierce determination and stubbornness. The Borg were certainly defanged somewhat by Voyager, but it's terrific to see Alice Krieg back as the Borg Queen, and she has great chemistry with both Jerry Ryan and Kate Mulgrew. Voyager's final confrontation with the Borg at the Transwarp Hub is far too easy thanks to the future tech upgrades to the ship, but the spectacle is still quite entertaining, and Admiral Janeway's final fuck you to the Borg Queen is very satisfying. It's absolutely a mixed bag, but I think Endgame is still a good finale to the show overall. It comes full circle, revisiting the same moral dilemma as Caretaker, only much more successfully. And it's packed with a bunch of great character moments. Except for the head-scratching Seven of Nine Chakotay romance. No idea what they were really thinking with that one. But most of the focus is on Janeway anyway, and she's awesome as usual, as both her present and future self. As I said in my retrospective on Voyager, summing up Endgame kind of sums up my feelings on Voyager as a whole. It could have been better, but as it is, it's still pretty good. Next up is What You Leave Behind, the finale of Deep Space Nine. I've made it no secret that Deep Space Nine is my favourite Star Trek show, and in a way the true finale of this series is not this single episode, but the final ten. However, I feel like including ten episodes in this one spot on this list would be cheating. That being said, on a different day I might still put What You Leave Behind in the top spot. The end of the Dominion War is truly epic, although the noticeable reuse of stock footage does take me out of the final battle for a moment. Luckily, the Cardassians finally choosing to stick it to the Dominion and switch sides is all kinds of satisfying. For one thing, it's just spectacular, but it also represents such a great change for the Cardassians as a people. After decades ruling their little corner of the galaxy, finally they know what it feels like to suffer under an oppressor as the Bajorans did under them. Damar going from Gul Dukat's lackey to a revolutionary leader is truly something to behold. But after all the battles come to an end, the rest of the episode is just a slow goodbye to all of the characters and the station itself. Deep Space Nine stood apart from the other Trek shows by embracing the consequences of its stories, and the finale is no different. The status quo is gone by the end of this show. The majority of main characters have moved on. It's bittersweet, but it also feels right to end things here. O'Brien finally finding the lost figure from the Alamo, punctuated by a sting of Minstrel Boy in the score, is moving enough, but it's that final shot of the station which really does kill me. Which means, through process of elimination, the top spot goes to all good things from Star Trek The Next Generation. Whereas Turnabout Intruder represents all of the worst aspects of the original series, all good things represents all of the good things from the next generation. Revitalizing the trial of humanity from the very first episode is a stroke of genius, and weaving the plot through three different time periods is just so creative. The events taking place before Encounter of Farpoint are a treat for loyal viewers of the show, seeing familiar events altered, and the future time frame is a tantalizing glimpse at what might become of the Star Trek universe and its characters. While the whole cast gets some great material to go out on, the episode really belongs to Patrick Stewart and John Delancey. I really enjoy how Q in some ways is closer to his first appearance, where he's a bit more threatening and less eccentric, but it's Patrick Stewart who really anchors the episode. Just like Picard, we as viewers are initially disoriented and confused by the time jumps, struggling to understand what is happening. So when all the puzzle pieces come together by the end, it's really gratifying. The climax where Picard finally gets a hang of the time jumps, seamlessly giving orders to three different versions of the Enterprise, is a real punch-the-air moment. And of course, the last scene where he joins the poker game, accompanied by Dennis McCarthy's excellent score, really tugs at the heartstrings. Honestly, if this is where the adventures of the next-gen crew ended, I'd be pretty happy with that. So that's my ranking for the Star Trek TV show finales. Do you agree? Disagree? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you like these videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date on my new uploads. If you want to help the channel grow, join my patrons or my YouTube members, where you can see videos early as well as some other exclusive content. Speaking of which, I'd like to quickly thank all of my patrons and members who are now appearing on screen. Have a good one, and as always, 
live long and prosper.